Hi guys, welcome to another MSI Insider live stream. I'm here with the one and only, Ruud. the original, <laughs> you Ruud. even have it in your name tag, the Ruud Swane. The Ruud Swane. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, if Ruud's here, we're going to talk about uh, technical stuff, and we're going to demonstrate stuff, uh, so that's definitely what we're doing today. Um, we're going to talk about motherboards, um, and not just a couple of motherboards, we have many different models, and also, they're also from a technical perspective, very, very different. But before we go into that, we also have a very nice giveaway today. So if you want to participate, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, uh, our bot will also put a direct link to Gleam in uh, the chat once every five minutes. Um, in Gleam, you can perform certain actions. The more, you the, the more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Um, and if you're a returning visitor, make sure to claim your loyalty bonus as well to have a slight edge in the giveaway. Um, and we will be giving away several codes for Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla this week. So definitely worth to do so. So Ruud, are you excited for today? Yes, I am. Yeah. There's some uh, new stuff here. You got a lot of stuff lying around you, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a, yeah, it's not one topic, it's it's many, and I have so many different boards lying around and also <laughs> different test platforms. So and a lot of stuff we're showing today. Yeah, hopefully we have enough time to do it all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, and today Ruth is here, so if there are technical questions, this is, this is your chance to ask them. Yeah. Uh, I already see many people in chat. Hello, everyone. I see a question from Haji. Where's the motherboard? <laughs> that one we still need to launch. We've we've been launching motherboards for quite a while now, but motherboards we haven't come to that. Maybe we can do the mother of all motherboards. The mother as a new name. It's like instead of godlike. <laughs> <laughs> like motherception. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at it. Because we've got something very exciting to announce, at least in my opinion, exciting. Because we will be coming with a whole bunch of new AMD uh, X570 motherboards. Uh, and I know a lot of people have been waiting for this. Um, because all of the boards that you see in this overview will be passively cooled. So no fan on the chipset. Um, of course, our previous, uh, we already have a big lineup of X570 motherboards. But right now, all our boards have uh, active heats and cooling, so they have a fan. Uh, it is semi-passive, however, so the fan will only start spinning if it actually needs to. Um, but on these boards, it's, they're fully passive. Um, and today we're going to talk about two models specifically. And those are the models that will actually um, come first by the end of this month. The MAG X570S Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi and the MAG X570S Torpedo Max. From X570S, you can see that it's our silent version of the motherboard, so no fan at all. Um, but the max means that there is more. There are more changes than just the chipset fan, because we've actually taken the opportunity to make a whole lot of improvements on these motherboard series. Um, and today you can already see this on the uh, torpedo and the tomahawk that we both have right here. Or is asking no normal X570 Unify, um, not uh, at this point, but that never say never. Maybe in the future um, this can also be expanded. Uh, but at this point, first we will be uh, coming with the Unify X. Um, Aditya is asking no ITX, no. And that's actually because on AMD you can already on B550 you can overclock your CPU. Um, and the, ch the benefits of X570 are not as prominent on a very small fa form factor motherboard because all the possibilities of X570 you cannot really um, utilize them if you don't have the space for all those slots, etc. Um, that's also why we have a very high-end uh, B550 Mini ITX board, the MPG B550i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, um, that has a lot of nice features um, and should for, especially for ITX users, it doesn't make that much of a difference whether you're using um, X570 or B550. Um, so these are all uh, ATX motherboards. Um, Edwin K is asking, is there a difference between PCI Express 4 and 3 SSDs when, when it is the same like consoles? I'm not sure what you mean with that specific question, because there are definitely differences in terms of speed between PCI Express Gen 4 and PCI Express Gen 3 SSDs. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a big difference. Um, 
There's also a difference between the Gen 4 from the first wave and the Gen 4 from the second wave. Yeah, indeed. So the, the basically the, the first bunch of Gen 4 SSDs, you had like read speeds up to approximately 5,000 well, 5, yeah. megabytes per second. And now they're going well over 7,000 already. Yeah. Uh, so actually indeed a, a big increase. And with Gen 3, you're limited to approximately 3,500, 3,600. Yeah, That's about like where that. it yeah. maxes out. Um, so from that perspective, like in, in raw read and write speeds, there is a big difference between Gen 4 and Gen 3 SSDs. Toasty is saying, <laughs> uh, um, I hope ATX 12 volt only is coming soon. So cool to see. Um, well, to get you out of your dream a little bit for the consumer market, don't expect this on the very short term. Um, I would say this is specifically interesting for system integrators, uh, so for full system builds. Um, and today we will also demonstrate you why. So definitely yeah. um, keep watching if you're interested in, in how it works and the technical background. Um, and also if you're curious about what kind of difference it makes, we will have a test setup with both yeah. a regular uh, standard motherboard and power supply and a 12 volt only motherboard and power supply. Um, so you can see the difference today. A uh, very good question from Francisco. Are the new X570S more powerful than the older X570 or are they the same? Actually, th from a hardware perspective, like purely the chipset, they're the same. Um, so that's also the X570S is not an official name from AMD. That's what we use it to, to show that it's the silent version of our motherboard. Um, but from a technical perspective, it's still the X570 chipset. It still has exactly the same feature set. Of course, the motherboard can have a different feature set because we also upgraded some of the feature sets with this new generation. Um, but from a technical perspective, there are no differences. Um, but the big difference is that AMD did a firmware upgrade on their chipset. Um, and because of that, it's more suitable for passive cooling. So basically, they lowered the power consumption of their chipset with that firmware update. Um, and that allows us to um, release a whole bunch of passively cooled motherboards. Uh, Alex asking, cool, is the power supply included? Um, like, for now, it, it's not on the consumer market at all. So that um, at this point, there is nothing sold included or separately at all. Um, but in the future, you might see bundles with that. Um, but I still expect, in theory, you will buy your power supply and motherboard separately. Um, yeah, so let's first take a look at, at some of these models. And the first model we'd like to show you is the MAG X570S Torpedo Max. And Ruud actually has one right in front of him. Yeah, I have one. So let's first take a look at it up close. This is up close like that. So this is the MAG X570S Torpedo Max. Um, we actually didn't have a torpedo model yet on X570, so that one is actually completely new um, in the lineup. Uh, we did, of course, already have some torpedo models on, for example, um, Z590, B560. Um, so there, there are torpedo models already, but now we also have one on X570. Uh, you can already see fully passive um, uh, chipset cooling. Um, as you can see on the right, you have a Tomahawk there, right? The, the yeah. old version of the, the Tomahawk, the, not that old yeah. yet. The previous released Tomahawk. And there you can see that on the chipset you have the small fan. Yeah. Um, that one doesn't always spin, only if it actually needs to. But right now the torpedo, fully passive. Um, the previous Tomahawk already had a very strong VRM design. Um, so we're actually using that VRM design um, again on our torpedo, the, the new torpedo and the new Tomahawk. Um, so that means it is a 12-phase, um, I believe it's 60 amp intercell uh, power design, so extremely strong. But we did make a few tweaks to the VRM cooling. Um, and if you look very carefully, you can see that on the X570 Tomahawk, you see that the chokes, they are exposed. I hope I can point it out here. Yeah, so that's the row of chokes. And on the Torpedo and also the Tomahawk that we currently has on his, on his test bench, the new version, that yep. one has the heat sink all the way over the chokes. And there is also a thermal pad in between there. And so the chokes themselves, yeah. They, yeah, they don't really produce a lot of heat. Um, but of course, 
the, um, the MOSFETs, they do produce heat, and that will also transfer over to all the components around it, including yeah. the chokes. Um, so the basically, PCB, yeah. yeah, so basically we're uh, increasing the surface area and the contact area with the heat sink um, for better heat dissipation of the VRM. And this has a very, very powerful VRM. Even if you want to overclock uh, a Ryzen 9, it will totally do the job. Yep. Um, I see a question from Peter. Uh, so torpedo, or sorry, does the does it have an integrated fan under the heatsink? No, there is no fan at all no. on this motherboard. It's just metal. Yeah. yeah so it's completely passive, and also the the VRM cooling is also completely passive. So there yep. are no hidden just, fans uh, in the motherboard. There's no fans here at all, so it's just you can see me through it. Um, Nigerian is asking on Twitch, so the torpedo has better cooling coverage on the VRMs compared to the like the the torpedo and the Tomahawk. The new versions, um, they both have these upgrades. Yep. Um, the older torpedo, uh, the older uh, Tomahawk X570 Tomahawk doesn't have that yet. It doesn't have, for example, the choke pads. Um, but it still offers an extremely strong VRM design as well already on yep. the old X570 Tomahawk, which is not that old yet, but. Um, what I was saying, only two M.2 slots, yes, on the X570S, uh, both the Torpedo and Tomahawk, there are only two M.2 slots, but we'll definitely be expanding our lineup with more X570S Max models, um, and also ones that offer more M.2 slots. Um, I saw an other question. Let me scroll back a tiny little bit. I saw a question about ITX, so I always have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Unknown Stuntman says, need uh, more ITX models and white PCB boards. White PCB is tricky, yeah. especially with PCI Express Gen 4. Uh, that has to do with the signal quality. Um, our testing shows that the black PCB gives you quite a bit better signal quality than a white PCB. Um, and that signal quality is very important, not only for PCI Express Gen 4, um, but also for, for example, memory overclocking. Um, and yeah, ITX, we currently on AMD only have on the B550, and that's because X570 doesn't give you that much of a benefit on many ITX. Okay, then let's continue to the MAG X570S Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. Um, so in terms of power design, this board is identical to, um, to the Torpedo. Uh, the differences in, in, uh, between the, the Tomahawk Wi-Fi and the Torpedo are, of course, the Wi-Fi. So the Torpedo has 2.5 gigabit LAN and 1 gigabit LAN. Oh, I think we have we showed that up close. Let's take a detailed look at the I.O. So this is what you will find on the Torpedo. So you see you have Two, two wired network ports, a 2.5 gigabit LAN and one gigabit LAN. And on the uh, Tomahawk, you will get one 2.5 gigabit LAN port and Intel Wi-Fi 6E. So then you have one LAN port yeah. and Wi-Fi. Uh, another difference is that the Torpedo will give you uh, cooling on only on the primary M.2 slot, uh, whereas the uh, X570S Tomahawk Wi-Fi um, will give you um, M.2 shield frother cooling on both M.2 yep. slots. Two heatings. Yeah, so here you only have the top one, and the Tomahawk will give you yep. one on the bottom as well. Yep. I see people asking about pricing. Um, still too early to give you an exact number, but expect for these MAG models, like to give you an indication, I would say around 20 US dollar um, higher than the previous models. And that, of course, doesn't only have to do with the fact that it's now passively cooled, but also the other upgrades that were introduced with these motherboards. Matt is asking, is there firewire? No, there is no firewire on these boards anymore. That's an outdated standard. Also, one is asking, admin, uh, 10 gigabit LAN. Um, no, this is only 2.5 gigabit LAN. No, but other motherboards with 10 gigabit LAN. Cannot talk about that yet. Oh. Maybe, maybe not. But later <laughs> we will we will give you more info about the other models. So today we will I will only give you the details about the MAG models. Um, 
But if we go back a little bit, you can expect more information on these other motherboards uh, in the coming months. Okay, we, we will have another live stream about X570S motherboards. Um, also, a few people are asking about the temperatures. Uh, we're going to demonstrate that yeah. later on. I think especially many people will be curious about because there is, it's from a hardware perspective, it's still the same chipset. So it's not like X570S is physically different from the old X570. Um, but because of these software tweaks, it's very well possible um, to have uh, passive cooling. And we will demonstrate that also by putting a lot of load on, for example, PCI Express Gen 4 bus, by using a dedicated graphics card, by using multiple Gen 4 SSDs, um, and then we will measure the temperatures. So maybe uh, let's get going into that, dude. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So what do you have in front of you? Uh, this test system, uh, I can point at it, but uh, it's not in the stream yet. So it's basically the X570 Tomahawk S with a 5950X uh, Ryzen 9. And I've put a RX 6900 XT Gaming X Trio on it. So all Gen 4. Uh, also the SSDs uh, in the M.2 slots are Gen 4. Those are Western Digital SN850s. And uh, what we can do is uh, we, we can put a lot of load on the, on the chipset by uh, moving a lot of data uh, to the uh, M.2 connected to the chipset. So basically we can raise the temperature uh, of the chipset. Um, I've opened up uh, HW Info 64 and on top here you can see the, the chipset temperature. At the moment it's uh, about 51 uh, degrees. When I started it up it was about 40, something like that. It's running already for uh, half an hour or so. And uh, we can also, uh, I can show you. So I have one local, this C is just a SATA drive where Windows is on. And I have, uh, this is a USB stick, I can just pull that out, it's not important at the moment. And I have a SN850 uh, with some files on it, it's uh, connected to... So a to very the fast Gen yeah. 4 Western Digital SSD? Yeah, this one uh, is connected to the CPU, so that's in slot M2 dash of uh, underscore 1. And the other one, drive E, is connected to the uh, chipset. So if we want to load the chipset, we need to um, stress that uh, SSD. And then there's a lot of data coming from the uh, memory to through this chipset and then towards the SSD. Uh, we can use a simple uh, disk benchmark like Crystal Disk Mark, and we can just stress it and see what what, what goes on. Uh, also here you can see the the read rate and the write rate, and also the, the drive temperature of the uh, the drive connected to the chipset. Uh, I'll just fire it up and see. Uh, if the temperatures are rising and the speeds are climbing. At the moment it's creating a test file uh, at around 3 gigabytes uh, per second. And then it should start reading. In the meanwhile I see a question from Easy in chat. Have you improved the VRM quality of the new MPG X570S? I won't give you all the details about all the upcoming uh, X570S models, but I, I will give you a sneak peek that um, especially the MPG models got a, got a massive upgrade in terms of VRM quality. Uh, so yes, you can definitely expect a, a big increase of uh, VRM performance on those motherboards. I'm using a, a very large data set in uh, Crystal Disk Mark. Normally it's at one gigabyte and only one repetition or five repetitions. Uh, <coughs> so I, I'm just maxing out the, the, the load on the uh, on the SSD and you can see also the drive temperature it's climbing quite fast it's going from 39 to 57 in, uh, in, a, in a few minutes and with the chipset it's just resting at 51.5 so there's a lot of data going through the chipset coming from memory going to the SSD uh, so yeah the, the stress on the chipset should be high but um, Apparently, the temperature is not increasing that much. It might climb uh, a half degree or one degree, depending on what kind of uh, load uh, it's going through. Uh, sequential load is usually less stress than a lot of uh, small files or small data blocks. 
and also write is usually uh, more load on the SSD so the, the temperature of the drive will climb faster as well uh, during the write uh, tests. Order is asking a B550 Unify versus the new X570S. Um, it depends a bit on, on uh, to which model in this new series you will compare them to. Um, B550 Unify is an extremely strong B550 motherboard. I would, it's like it, it got basically the, the strongest VRM possible almost on the motherboard. Um, and it also has a very cool trick where you can actually take away some lanes from your GPU and transfer them to um, M.2 slots, so it gives you four uh, M.2 slots. Um, th these motherboards, for example, have two M.2 slots, uh, but we will have higher-end X570S models also with more M.2 slots. Um, so it depends a bit on, on what you want to do with it. Um, and if you're going to use the extra lanes of X570, because then X570 will, of course, be a benefit over B550. Um, but if you're not going to do that, you might benefit more from the, the extremely strong VRM on the B550 Unify. I chose to a large data set. <laughs> <laughs> that takes too long. Um, Neo is asking on YouTube, do they have uh, addressable uh, RGB pins? Yes, they definitely have yeah. a RGB hairs. Maybe while this is running, we can show it up close on the torpedo. Yeah. On MSI, it's called J Rainbow. As a yeah, so you have name. two types of headers. J yeah. RGB is like the, um, the yeah. old school RGB header, but that one is not addressable. And J Rainbow, so the three pin one, um, that one is addressable. So it can also display multiple colors at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Forza E2 is asking, I want to check these new motherboards on MSI website. When can I do that? Um, for By the end of this month, you will f uh, find the MAG models on our website. Um, in a couple of more months, you will see more uh, models emerging from the new X570S models. So how is the chipset temp doing right now? Uh, it's even dropped a uh, half degree. So. And now you're stressing the chipset quite hard. Yeah. Now it's writing uh, the data to the SSD. So you can see that the, uh, the drive is climbing, the temperature is climbing again. And uh, that, that's normal. That, that will happen with any SSD, uh, even if there's a heat sink on it. Of course, airflow in your case will uh, help uh, because the, the heat sink is uh, it, uh, it's it's small compared to the um, to the heat source, I would say. Uh, but if you have airflow there, it will help. And uh, also depends on on how uh, how much stuff you have in the case. Because if you put graphics card over an SSD, then the SSD will be yeah closed and will be uh, will not get too much fresh air. Yeah. So definitely important also to have proper airflow within yeah. your case yeah. to make sure that your SSD gets enough fresh air yeah. um, in case you're going to do workloads like we're doing now to really stress the yeah. SSD. So sometimes the SSD is not even heated up be because you stress the SSD, but uh, maybe because the graphics card is, uh, is heating it up. Just opening my drink, it's a little bit loud. <laughs> Yeah, and the test is uh, taking quite some time. But. Henrik is asking, do you guys know anything about the DDR5? Yes, we do. Is there any X570S motherboard specifically designed for memory overclocking, uh, like the B550 Unify X? Um, yes, um, we have the X570S Unify X um, in the list as well, so that one will come later. Um, and I can already give away that, of course, it's a Unify X model that one ha will have two DIMM slots. So yes, there will be an X570S Unify X with two DIMM slots. Um, that is 
extremely interesting for memory overclocking. Hussein is asking, uh, are the XI70S just preparation for next AMD CPUs? Um, no, from a technical perspective, these chipsets can still do exactly the same as the old X570S. Um, so in terms of possibilities from, from the chipset side of things, um, there are no differences. So if AMD would launch anything um, on the same platform that is compatible with the new uh, X570S models that we're, uh, we're releasing, then it will also be possible with the older X570 models. Are we sponsored by Monster? No, I will drink a Red Bull next live stream to set that straight, okay? <laughs> uh, Oren says, no normal X570 Unify with four DIMM slots. Um, the normal X570 Unify we already have, but at this point uh, we don't have an X570S Unify with four DIMM slots in the planning. But it doesn't mean that it will not come. Maybe if enough people like you are asking for this model, then uh, we can always take a look at what we can do. Um, but especially in the beginning, you always have to set a certain limitation on the number of uh, ports you can launch, of course. Yeah, so the, I the still don't see any flames. Yeah, the, the chipset <laughs> topped out, or the, sorry, the, the SSD topped out at 59 uh, degrees, and uh, the chipset just hovered between 51 and 51.5 uh, degrees Celsius. So not heating up uh, at all. So of course it depends. We're in an open test bench situ situation now, so there are no other heat sources except for uh, the, the chipset. Uh, uh, I can uh, move a lot of data from the, the SSD from the CPU to the uh, chipset uh, SSD, but yeah, basically this uh, crystal disk mark is doing more or less the same thing. I see a question from Nigerian on Twitch. What's the ambient? Temperature, so the room temperature. Right now, it's at I can see it on the screen there. It's um, at 22 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'm sure Google can help you with that. Yeah, I would say here it's a bit cooler. Yeah, you're it's around underneath 20, air conditioning, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, I also have a, a thermo gun and uh, the the heat sink out. Uh, yeah, the the. Uh, the heat sink uh, surface area is about 46 degrees. I can see if there's any hot spot there, but there's also a graphic card over it. Yeah, 46.3 is the max. So the chip itself, uh, according to the internal sensor, is about 51.8 Celsius, and the outside is about 46. So that's not even close to Having no, to you, worry you about. You just touch <laughs> it, and you feel, yeah, it's a little bit warm, but it's it's nothing, yeah, nothing spectacular. So passively cooled X570 motherboards is no issue anymore. No problem. No. Let me see if we have. I can drop some data from SSD one. Martin says, "Can you show the RGB on the boards?" Do you have it switched on right now? Uh, there is some RGB there, yeah. Can you uh, get your phone? Then we can show yeah. it up close. <laughs> I'll just move the data from SSD connected to the CPU to the uh, to the SSD connected to the chipset. Uh, writing about, yeah, in total it was about 190 gigabytes or something. Can you connect to my phone? Yes, I should be able to. But I seem to have a different IP now. 59? Was that Are you same? on the right network still? Hang on. No. <laughs> <laughs> that explains. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. It yeah, so probably back to switched when I, when I went to the other building. Ah, yeah. Uh, 63. Uh, yes. Ah, here we go. Okay. So below the heatsink of the chipset, there is some LEDs, and apparently they're in rainbow mode now. 
I don't know if there's any LEDs. Yeah, only under the heatsink of yeah. the of the chipset. So I will quickly show you uh, a slide with the old X570 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard next to the new X570S Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. And here you can see that indeed there is no RGB behind the motherboard anymore like we had on the on the older model. Right now we have RGB lighting underneath the, uh, the chipset heatsink. Um, and we also have a fresh look and feel for the X570S model. So what do you guys think? Do you, do you prefer the look of the, the newer model or do you maybe still prefer the one of the older model? I'm curious to see your opinions. <laughs> Still some people think I'm sponsored by Monster or Red Bull. No, it's just because I'm thirsty at a certain point. <laughs> also, the uh, copy, copying of 200 gig uh, was finished. And now the chipset is doing about 52.5 degrees, so hardly moving the temperature. And the dry temperature was about 57. So not, no shocking temperatures there. Let me see, I see the newer one. New one looks better because of no fan. Yeah, that can also be a thing. Uh, I agree that a fan is not specifically the nicest thing to look at on the motherboard. So I, I can agree with that, that passive also looks better. Uh, Forza also says X570S all the way from what I see. Mati says, I have the old one, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I, I also like the looks of, of, of the old one. Um, but I do think that the new one looks really good as well. We tried to go for a, a slightly cleaner look with the new version. So I hope it shows. <laughs> is that it? Yes. I saw some questions in the chat before about uh, ATX 12 VO. Okay. Shall we demonstrate what it is? Because I, I, yeah, I'm not sure if everyone in chat is already familiar with ATX yeah. 12 VO, because this is quite a, a new technology. Let me sit a little bit higher in the box. Um, okay. ATX 12 VO is a new standard. Um, and VO stands for volts only. So that means that you will basically only feed 12 volts into your motherboard, whereas usually you feed 12 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts. That also means that we're using a different power supply um, that will only um, get, in this situation, 230 volts of active current. When, for example, in the United States, it will be 110 volts of, of active current and then you will get 12 volts of direct current for your motherboard. Um, so let's first take a look at what, for example, a 12 volt motherboard look like, looks like. This is the Z590 Pro uh, 12 VO, so 12 volts only. Um, and maybe you can already see the difference. So if you look at the, the part where you would usually find your 24 pin ATX plug, you see that there are a couple of changes there. Not only the input, but right now you will also see some output. So, Ruud, you have one of those boards in front of you, right? I do. This is the Z590 Pro 12 VO. With the CPU, some memory and an SSD. Yeah, Just for I, your I information, that doesn't come included. But no, <laughs> no it, the, the CPU is there because we're going to do the test with the CPU on it. Um, that's 11900K. I also have the... C590 uh, Pro Wi-Fi, but I removed the Wi-Fi so it doesn't uh, consume any power. So you turn it into a Pro. One. <laughs> yeah, so it's an almost identical board, um, except for this one is 12 VO, so different power supply uh, connections, and uh, uh, for the rest it's almost uh, the same. So can you maybe show those power connectors up close, because those are the biggest difference. Uh, shall I use the droid cam or yeah, sure. whatever you like best? Yeah, I, I think the droid cam will do it uh, 
quite well. <clears throat> oh, I think I need to reconnect. Yeah, I'll reconnect. Oh my god, we're black. Screen is dark. Oh, yes, there we're we back. go. Uh, okay, uh, so the uh, this is the connector that c comes from the power supply, so that's a replacement uh, of the 24 pin uh, most people are used to. And that's a, a 10 pin connector, and this is the the power connector, and it only has yeah a lot of 12 volts and uh, ground pins, and of course also some standby. Uh, voltages. Uh, with the old power supply you're, you were used to the 5 volt standby and that's also been replaced by the 12 volt standby. So that's why it's called 12 volt only. So there's only 12 volt coming from the power supply and if you need uh, power for uh, external drives and so, uh, it will uh, come from the motherboard. So there's also some extra connectors so let me grab the cables. Uh, so those three uh, uh, connectors are power outputs for external drives. I have some nice colored uh, peripheral power cables here. And then you will go to the normal SATA connector power. So those are the ones you will usually find on your power supply. And yeah. now you will find them on your motherboard instead. Yeah, if you're using uh, dry, yeah, drives that are not uh, attached to your motherboard directly, like M.2, then uh, like SATA drives, then you will just use uh, power cables connected to the motherboard. And I do see a slight difference there with the SATA cable that I will get from my power supply, because yep. one cable is missing, right? Yeah, the 3.3 uh, volts uh, cable, usually the orange one, or it used to be orange, most power supplies now have all black cables. Yeah, they have a sleeve around it. Yeah, I also think that the 12 volt only uh, power supplies will only carry the, the black cables as well. Uh, but this is a prototype, so yeah, that's why th they probably use this kind of uh, colors. So the motherboard will provide you both the 12 volts and the 5 volts to your SATA power connector. Yeah, the 12 volt of course doesn't need to be converted on a motherboard because that is directly coming from uh, the power supply. So the motherboard only passes it through and mm -hmm. uh, the 5 volts and the 3.3 volts for the chipsets and all stuff on board uh, that is generated on the motherboard itself. So. There's a little circuit on this motherboard, or two little circuits, power circuits, uh, that will uh, do the uh, conversion from 12 volts to 5 volts and 3.3. So this part is the power circuit for 3.3 volt, and this part is the power circuit for 5 volts. <laughs> Hussein is saying on Twitch chat, mustard and ketchup cables. That's also yeah. what I called them. We were talking about this before the yeah, live stream. Yeah, yeah, mustard and ketchup. But this is just a prototype. That's why we also have prototype cables with it uh, at this point. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a mass production uh, power supply. And also, also the motherboard is yeah. still a prototype. Yeah. Don't expect this to go into the consumer market anytime soon. No. Right Some now OEMs are already using this, uh, um, but uh, not, not in the uh, do-it-yourself market. Yeah. Okay. So when we look from the top, you see the, the inputs from your power supply. So the input only 12 volt, and the output from the SATA power connector is both 5 volts and 12 volts. So, for example, um, if you want to power your SSD, etc., you will do that from your motherboard. Um, also, if you want to power, for example, liquid cooler or, uh, coolers, often use a SATA power connector as well, for example, to power the RGB. Um, that will also happen from your motherboard. Um, the 3.3 volts are not going out of those, um, but you will still need it on your motherboard itself. I believe the PCI Express slots still use 3.3 volts as well, right? Luke? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so that's why you still get the 3.3 volt uh, conversion circuit on your motherboard, because you do need to go from 12 volts from the power supply into the motherboard, and that will convert it into the 3.3 volts. So let's take a brief look at um, an overview of what your... Oh, I think my capture card crashed. Ah, we're back. Uh, I pulled it out. 
Uh, yeah, but my, mine flashed. <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> this is capturing my notebook where I have the, oh, the presentation. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So this is what you're probably used to. You have either 110 volts or 230 volts, depending on where in the world you are, uh, from your power outlet, so that's active current, to your power supply. Um, and your power supply will convert that into 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts. So the power supply takes care of the, the conversion of all those uh, voltages. Um, from your power supply, you then have your 24-pin uh, ATX cable that carries 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts all to the motherboard. Then you have the power connectors for your CPU. Those are 12 volts already in the current system. So in ATX 12VO, nothing changes there. Um, it will still um, provide 12 volts there as well. Um, and you have, for example, your um, SATA power connectors that on a regular power supply also carry 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts. So you can, for example, power your SSD or other SATA powered devices. Now with ATX 12VO, things are changing a little bit. Um, you still get 110 volts or 230 volts, depending on your region of active current from your um, uh, power socket to your power supply. Um, you still have the 12 volts to your CPU power connector, direct, cur direct current, but the big difference is that instead of the 24-pin ATX power connector that carries 12 volt, volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts, you only get 12 volts to the motherboard. Then on the motherboard you get the conversion from 12 volts to 5 volts and 3.3 volts, and to the SATA power connector, for example, it will carry 12 volts and uh, 5 volts. Um, on the motherboard itself, uh, for example, the PCI Express slots, they will also have the 3.3 volts. Um, so basically, a couple of components that you will usually find in your power supply to convert the uh, active current into the direct current, um, instead, of only, um, instead of doing that for all voltages, it will only go to 12 volts, and then your motherboard will convert it out of those 12 volts of direct current into 5 volts and 3.3 volts. I hope you guys still get it. There's a lot of volts. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. also why I got the, the image. Hopefully that clarifies it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, let me see if we have some questions. Uh, Jose is asking, why do you do 12 volts to 5 volts through the motherboard instead of, as before, the PSU? And what's the expected outcome? Very good question. You know all about this. Uh, not exactly, but... Um, uh, well, there is a very easy reason for it, right? The, the easy reason uh, is probably because they want to do a power supply that's super efficient. And if they ditch the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt conversion, uh, most of the power supplies are even over specking those 5 volt and 3.3 volt capabilities because uh, I don't think it's, it's used that much, so uh, they still offer like 20 amps on 5 volts, but that was in the old days that it was necessary, and nowadays it's not necessary. If you want to meet those 80 plus certifications, like uh, 80 plus um, platinum, you will have to uh, also do uh, 10, 20 percent, 50 percent, and 100 percent loads on those 5 volts as well. So in order to meet uh, the efficiency ratings, uh, if you move it to the motherboard, it might it, it might be much easier to do in a power supply. So you only have to uh, be very efficient uh, while converting uh, 220 volts or 110 volts uh, to uh, 12 volt DC. So basically, that's the reason. So they they can have a 80 plus platinum power supply label on it, or even higher, or even better. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. So that's also why and. Yeah, this is all theory, but in practice, yeah. it also makes much of a difference how are you going to use it. Because, for yeah. example, if you're going to use a dedicated graphics card, then the story already changes a bit, right? Don't spoil it. <laughs> I still have a demo to do. So let's maybe go to that demo then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, on the test bench now, there's the Z590 uh, Pro Wi-Fi. Uh, that's this motherboard. I can. Uh, hover the droid cam if you want. 
you need to connect it. I think this should. Uh, Is my Wi Fi moved again? <laughs> I think so. No, it didn't. Hmm. Okay. Still on 63? Yeah, still 63. Yeah. Let me restart this. Oh, wait, Can you wait. restart your app? I think it just. Uh, it lost Wi Fi and then it got, got back. Now it's back. Try again? Please. Yes, yeah, there we, we are again. Good. No, yes, no. Yep, yep. there oh, we are. Okay, here we go. So basically, the board is looking almost identical to the uh, 12 VO board. Even the design uh, is the same. The only difference is that this motherboard has... So this is the normal one yeah, that you will find the in the store. It's already on the market. Yeah. And it has a third M.2 slot where you will find the 5 volt and 3.3 volt conversion on the 12 VO board. So they've, yeah, they have exchanged the, M, uh, the third M.2 slot um, and used that space for the power conversion. So it does, because you're basically moving components from the power supply to the motherboard. It does take a little bit of extra space yeah. on the PCB. And to keep everything exactly the same, I'm using the same Be Quiet uh, Dark Pro 4 cooler. And I'm also using uh, the same SSD. Uh, it's a Western Digital uh, SN700. It's a PCI Express Gen 3 SSD uh, using the G-Skill memory uh, DDR4 3600 Trident Z <coughs> and uh, what is the benefit of 12 VO that's mostly the power consumption so and I'm not talking about power consumption in a uh, full load because uh, that's more depending on the CPU than on the power supply units but now this uh, this system is running in idle and it's drawing about 41 something watts from the wall <coughs> and it's up running up it's just sitting idle at the desktop so that's all <coughs> it's doing it's doing basically nothing uh, i can also run the hw info program and it will show you that it's doing only a few watts on the CPU. This is just loaded with uh, uh, BIOS defaults and XMP enabled. So the memory is running at 1800. So uh, that's the, uh, the maximum speed, which is uh, DDR4 3600 because it's DDR. I need to double the megahertz. <coughs> uh, so it's running around 15. 0.9 watts. I moved the mouse so it jumps up a little bit. It's also Windows, so it's um, it takes a while to stabilize at a uh, idle level. So uh, then it also allows the uh, CPU uh, to go into what they call C state, which is a uh, a lower power state than C0 is the normal active one. And uh, you can see here it's running at C7. Uh, almost 90% of the time or even more because it's just running idle. So basically <coughs> the C states, they can switch stuff off that yeah. is not required at that exactly. moment. Yeah. So they, they, they try to uh, switch stuff off as much as possible and still keep the, the thing running. So if you start, uh, for example, uh, um, a compression program, a video conversion, uh, 3D rendering, then uh, C7 will be gone and uh, C0, every core will be running at C0 maximum speed. So uh, you can also see that the megahertz is uh, dropping. Uh, so uh, it's running in low frequency mode. That also helps because then you can even uh, lower the power even more. Good question in chat. Um, what CPU is installed? Uh, CPU is 11900K. Uh, that's the only CPU we had two of. So it would be easy to switch between uh, the, the yeah. regular motherboard and the 12VO. We've been testing a little bit with two systems side by side as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is, it. yeah, it can make a slight difference what CPU you're using, but in theory, yeah. it will work the same on any CPU. Yeah, 
Uh, I'm using the W uh, Info 64. I'm using that a lot, uh, but uh, it's a uh, uh, it's showing what it's doing, so you can see the, 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 the frequency already dropped to 800 megahertz, sometimes it peaks, uh, but uh, if you just started up Windows, it will still run at 5.1 gigahertz, and we'll do that for about a minute. So I'm using the HW Info 64 just to show what's going on, and it will still consume a little bit of power, because before we had 41 watts, and now it's about one watt more, so it's about 42.3 something. Uh, oh, I, <laughs> we're upside down. We're upside down. Oh my <laughs> god. I hold it upside down. Yeah, that's the reason. I'm getting nauseous. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. My mistake. So, yeah, it, it's hovering about one watt, sometimes even 1.5 watts higher. And uh, that's just because the CPU needs to uh, run the, the HW Info program. While it's very power efficient and doesn't consume any or very little resources, it still, res uh, uh, yeah, it still needs some resources. So, uh, CPU will be waking up more than just uh, sitting at the uh, desktop idle. <coughs> so th this is the regular system. Uh, I, I will uh, uh, remove this uh, motherboard and we'll put the, uh, the the 12VO on it. So I have to remove the power supply as well. And let's see if we can uh, lower the power. I've also tested the, the performance of uh, both uh, systems <coughs> with uh, Cinebench 20, and they were identical. So also, the, uh, uh, I've uh, checked the, the SSD performance. They were also identical. So uh, there's no reason uh, to go for one or the other system. The only difference is the idle power. Um, Sufadev is asking us to have Thunderbolt support. Um, no, these Pro Series motherboards, they don't have Thunderbolt support. Uh, we do have Thunderbolt support on our very high end. By the way, we're, it's what? not that we're that close to each other. We are social distancing. I'm around uh -huh. the corner, just to make that sure. Look, now I'm gone. <laughs> um, but we do have Thunderbolt on, for example, our um, uh, Z590 Ace motherboard, or Godlike, but also the Z590i Unify. So those are all MEG models, and we do have Thunderbolt on those. Um, I see another question from uh, Web. Webster84, uh, if the X570S is just a firmware update making the chipset use less power, is it possible to update the old X570 boards with this firmware, lowering the chipset power as well? That's a very good question, and I was wondering exactly the same. <laughs> um, that's why we're definitely looking into this, if we can also get this uh, firmware upgrade to the older X570 models. Um, but because of the different requirements in terms of power, we did make slight tweaks in the uh, power delivery of the chipset, um, but we're definitely looking into it to see if we can also um, take some of these benefits and bring it to uh, existing X570 motherboards. Um, so um, hopefully more about that later. Um, Marco is asking, so are we going to get 80 plus ratings for motherboards with 12VO? I think at this point it is 12VO is a smart trick to, in the current system, get a very good 80 plus rating um, in the existing system. Um, but I'm not sure if in the future they will have different ratings for this or um, if we're going to do... Uh, I think with the energy labels there are already there have been quite a lot of changes recently like for example fridges or laundry washing machines etc. Um, those changes might also come in the future once everything gets more efficient. Usually every power supply will reach the top tier of that, that rating. Um, so then everything will, for example, be 80 plus titanium. They don't see the difference anymore. At that point, I expect them to make a certain division again. Um, and 12VO might influence um, how they're going to form those uh, standards. Also, it's, uh, it depends on what you do with your system, of course. If uh, Now it's for, for mostly for OEMs and stuff. Uh, and mostly for systems that are already power 
uh, economic by themselves. So, so pre-built systems. Yeah, but also uh, uh, lower spec systems. If you go to a gaming system, uh, you can uh, you might optimize it for uh, low power consumption and idle. <coughs> For example, uh, try to minimize the power level to, let's say, 30 watts or something. <coughs> but then uh, you, you start up a game and then uh, uh, go over 400 watts. So uh, if you save a little on idle and consume a lot on, uh, uh, on gaming or on uh, maximum performance, <coughs> then the, the savings might not be very relevant. So I think that's what the reason why uh, they stick to OEMs at the moment. <coughs> Johnson is asking, new oh, Ryzen yeah. model for X570S. You have to ask AMD about that. <laughs> but what AMD did announce during Computex is that um, their uh, APU, so the one with integrated graphics, their 5000G series, um, they're actually launching two models on the consumer market as well. They were already available through pre-built systems. Um, but if, I think from the 5th or 6th of August, um, I believe the 5th, um, they will also be uh, sold separately. Um, so you will find, for example, a Ryzen 5 um, uh, 5600G or a Ryzen 7 5700G uh, in the store separately. Um, those CPUs um, have integrated graphics, but keep in mind that they don't support PCI Express. Gen 4. So if you're going to combine it with a dedicated graphics card, card, then I would still suggest to go for the regular 5000 series uh, CPUs instead of APUs. Uh, Foxface is asking, can you see this? Yes, I can. Um, Tyra Hunter is asking, any of these new boards worth up upgrading for my X570As? Well, your X570As is already a very high-end motherboard. Um, and from a chipset perspective, there are no differences with these new X570As boards. Um, of course, some of these models will have newer features, like, for example, 2.5 gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, stuff like that. Um, but I, yeah, if you're already on uh, an MEG X570As, um, then I don't think it will be that much of a difference. It will be a bit of an upgrade, of course, um, but I, I wouldn't upgrade from an X570As at this point. It's still a very, very good motherboard. So, Rit, yep. are we up and running? I hope so. <laughs> well, in the meanwhile... I will pick our first winner for our giveaway. Uh, so we are giving away several uh, codes for Assassin's Creed of Valhalla today. Um, and if you haven't participated yet, make sure to go to msi.com slash two slash insider. There you can uh, find a Gleam link, or if you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, you will also find a link in the chat once every five minutes. Our bot will put it there. Um, if you go to Gleam, you can perform several actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Um, and if you're a returning visitor, make sure to claim your loyalty bonus as well. And our first winner for today is uh, Sir Farmalot. Congratulations, you won a game code for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If you have already participated, no need to do anything again because you will still be included in the next drawings as well. If you haven't done so, make sure to do so um, to have a chance to win a game key for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So congratulations again to Sir Farmalot. Keep an eye on your mailbox um, because we'll email the game code to you in the coming days. Back to Ruth. Okay, so it's up and running. So there's some changes to the system. So I had to move the uh, power supply out and put the 12VO power supply in and also change the motherboard, put a cooler on it because uh, I wanted to show the whole motherboard uh, before. Uh, it's uh, sitting at the desktop, so doing basically the same. Uh, so basically, you've only been changing two things, right? The motherboard and the power supply. Yeah. The rest all identical. Well, identical uh, components, yeah. So uh, at the desktop, uh, it should be uh, a little bit more power economic. And uh, we had 41 watts uh, when, oh, 
41 watts uh, when uh, the, the old board was on and the old power supply. Uh, by the way, the power supply I used was the A650 uh, GF from MSI. And uh, now it's doing roughly, yeah, sometimes it goes up a little bit, but um, on average about 38, I would say. So it saves about three watts or so. Not that much, but yeah. <coughs> it's a little bit. Uh, we saw also uh, early tests, uh, I think it was last year, August or September or something. Uh, Linus Tech Tips, and they had a huge difference, but uh, that cannot be co because only of the 12 VO compared to the regular one. And uh, I believe so that was also with a very high amp motherboard in the standard situation and quite an yeah. entry level. 12 volt only motherboard so yeah. for example high end motherboard has got a lot of rgb lighting and stuff yeah. that will consume power as well yeah um, and those two boards were, were very yeah not the same <laughs> that's what, yeah indeed yeah that's why we're trying to get two boards yeah. um that are extremely close to each other yeah uh, did even remove the wi-fi module to yeah. make them basically identical yeah <laughs> because the wi-fi module also needs power and uh, maybe it's only one or two watts but yeah but still to get a fair comparison yeah yeah so that's why I removed it, and uh, I also showed you the the HW info. I'm not sure what the wattage was for the CPU at that time. Uh, I think it was around 15 something. Uh, so this is a different CPU. So all CPUs have a little difference, and I also swapped the CPUs uh, in the in the pre-testing, and uh, the 12VO was consistently. Uh, 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 needing less power even with the other CPU so uh, the, the, the difference is always between uh, 3 and 7 watts if, if all settings uh, are identical and so this sounds like something very small but for example a large company that buys a thousand yeah. computers that are running eight hours a day and then if you get that kind of difference then it it can, it can become a bigger number yeah and th there's a lot of tweaking you can do or a lot of tweaking uh, well now we're just running with the integrated graphics of the of the CPU, and uh, um, th that allows you to go uh, with more power savings in in idle. So at the moment I just loaded default, uh, enabled XMP. I think that that's a procedure that most people just do when they they first build a system, and they haven't decided what to do with it yet. Load defaults, uh, enable XMP to get the the right speed of your memory and just uh, boot to Windows. That, that's a standard procedure for us. And uh, <coughs> I, I've also uh, yeah, tried to find some, some tweaks in the bias as well. And I don't know if we can go to the bias and uh, show you uh, what will help. Um, let's go to, uh, also there's some other stuff that uh, uh, you can do as well. Uh, well let's go to, the, to that later. I'll just, uh, boot to the, uh, the this is sometimes a challenge unified. with the capture card to boot into the bios yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but and with a bit of trial and error and pulling out <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> display I port and the, hdmi cables yeah, i have the display port and hdmi uh inserted so hey it works so uh, the hdmi is working but my uh, display port monitor is not outputting anything so i have to watch it's good you're wearing stream. your glasses today <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly but even then it's quite small but i know where the the stuff is um shall i make it a little bit bigger for you oh uh, no that's okay that's okay <laughs> i know where to, uh, to go um uh, of course there's a lot of settings in the bias and they can be intimidating i know uh but uh, what you want to look for is the advanced CPU configuration. It's in the o overclocking menu, but actually we're not going to overclock. We're going to uh, save some power. Um, there's also stuff there that, that that's a very recent topic about uh, power limits and stuff like that. Um, but uh, that only limits the power when the CPU is uh, fully loaded. Uh, so that's in 3D rendering or video conversion or, or, or that kind of stuff. Uh, or com uh, file compression, uh, that, that, that those limits are there. Uh, for this uh, particular uh, uh, subject, uh, we're going to look at power savings. And uh, that's uh, for the C states. Uh, normally, C states are already enabled for the cores, but not for the package. 
so you can enable this one uh, uh, I've tried it but didn't make a much difference on the uh, rock lake chip so we're just gonna leave that at, as a default uh, the package C state limit at the moment it's set to auto but um, when you check it uh, in uh, HW info 64 uh, it, it doesn't allow the, the package to go into any C state except C0 or meaning full active so I'm just going to select the highest available one there and that means the most power savings and see what it gets me so just press F10 save and exit and let's see what it does in Windows <coughs> Toasty Things is saying I also saw the Lions Tech Tips video but with your points you highlight I understand now that the difference will be really small but combined with much systems using 12VO uh, would lead to a high amount of saving um, yeah. yeah and especially if, if it's running in idle a lot under load the, the difference is, is neglectable, I would say. Yeah, yeah almost zero, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think in, in load, the difference will be still very much the same because the, the savings are done on the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt conversion, which are uh, done at, at minimum on the motherboard, while the power supply has to uh, have a very robust system for the 5 volts and the 3.3 volts, uh, much more capable than will probably yeah. ever be used. And that's why, why the inefficiency comes around. But uh, with if you're consuming 300 watts, then a 3 watt difference is 1%. Exactly. Whereas yeah. if you're consuming 30 watts, a 3 watt difference is 10%. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we can, uh, I'll fire up HW Info 64 again, uh, just to see what it's doing. At the moment, you can see uh, the CPU is still in high frequency mode. So if you're doing power uh, testing with your system, wait until the CPU has gone into low frequency mode. Uh, I'm using the, the standard balanced uh, 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 power profile from Windows, so uh, that means also speed step will be enabled and uh, the, the CPU will switch down to low frequency mode, or there it goes, uh, to 800 megahertz. So it, then you know it's in low frequency mode. Okay, let's see about uh, the package uh, uh, C states. <coughs> At the moment we can see uh, the cores uh, still doing C0 and C7 according to uh, this uh, program uh, okay so the, the cores are already doing power saving now we also see the package uh, C states uh, coming up so uh, that's what we've enabled in the BIOS uh, uh, and before we had about 13 uh, watts of uh, CPU power and uh, I can reset the timers and see what oh I scroll up too much <laughs> Okay, reset, <coughs> and then you can see what the, the package power is doing in average. And uh, you, you can still see that there's some uh, background task going on. If I move the mouse, then also you will see uh, some CPU thread usage. Uh, if it's about 1 to 2 percent, then it's doing almost nothing. So uh, let's aim for that. And if you look at the, the bottom graph, uh, the CPU package power it's hovering around the 6 watts now instead of the 13 watts so that's a big saving hopefully we can also see that in the uh, in the wall power as well <coughs> looks like the droid cam is still active so let's go there uh, let me get there we go yeah and before we had 38 something in, on the 12 VO and now it's dropping to 24. So that, that's that's one, quite a big difference. That's one bias setting. So yeah. uh, b before we had uh, a, a three watt difference on let's say 40 in total, that's not that much. But three watts on 24 becomes already a bigger chunk. And if we can lower that even more, then uh, we we can uh, uh, then three watts becomes more important. <coughs> I would say. So th there's another thing we can do, and uh, I did a lot of testing before, so uh, to show you uh, what what is possible and what makes a difference. So uh, the next step I'm gonna do <coughs> is uh, at the moment uh, the SSD is connected to the CPU uh, with uh, the Rock Lake and the Z590. Uh, you can attach the the SSD to the CPU or to the chipset. 
Well, the uh, CPU allows uh, Gen 4. At the moment, I'm only using a Gen 3 SSD. <coughs> um, the reason for that is because we had also two of those lying around. And we, we needed the Gen 4s for the AMD uh, demo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm moving the, uh, the SSD one slot down. So it will be connected to the, uh, the, the chipset. Yeah, so the top slot is always the one where you will use your um, yeah. CPU lanes, if your CPU has those lanes available for an M.2 SSD, of course. Um, um, and the bottom slot will take the lanes from your chipset. Yeah, this board is a little particular, I'm not sure why, but um, sometimes it doesn't see the SSD the first boot, so sometimes we need to... I think it's one of my samples, so it yeah, might be an early it's a sample, very early and one. I sometimes... Yeah get very early engineering samples of yeah. motherboards. <laughs> also had some issues with the LAN before, yeah. Yeah, usually, uh, for example, when we have a new product launch like the Z590 launch um, uh, earlier this year, um, we always try to get the boards as fast as possible to be able to, to show them to you guys during the live stream. Um, but that means sometimes we don't have any actual uh, samples yet like you will find them in the store. Um, so also, for example, can you quickly grab the torpedo, dude? Yeah. The torpedo the is over here. Seven, yes. I have too many boards here. <laughs> <laughs> so here you can, for example, see uh, the memory slots. They're all black on this motherboard. When you will buy this motherboard in the store, um, you will actually get um, a color scheme that matches the rest of the motherboard. So you will get it. Um, two of the slots will be blue, for example, to match with the heatsink. Um, so this is one example of an engineering um, uh, an engineering sample yeah. um, that we're using in the live stream. Um, so there there can be slight differences with the one that you will find in the store. Yeah. And sometimes um, engineers in our headquarters have been soldering on those boards and um, have been adding stuff, removing stuff. So yeah. those boards are not always in great shape anymore. <laughs> Also, the 12VO doesn't have any um, heat sinks on the SSD, while the Pro Wi-Fi did. So I also removed the, the M.2 SSD heat sink from the Pro Wi-Fi. Yeah. So that was also different. So I, I took it out as well. Okay. So. But that uh, was all, only this sample as well, because usually the 12 volt only motherboard also comes with M.2 yeah. shield frozer on the primary yeah, slot. It's a sample issue. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So it's uh, up and running again. Uh, um, so, um, let's see what, what's going on with the HW info and what's the CPU doing. Uh, it's still at high frequency mode, so let's wait a little bit for that to come down. Uh, scroll down too much again. Um, interesting to see here, uh, maybe um, in front of it, or maybe I scroll up a little bit more. So now package uh, C state, uh, before it went up to C3, and now it goes up to package C8. So the package can go into a much lower power. So it can switch off even more to be even more um, and, and that's because of the, uh, the PCI Express on the CPU is not loaded at this moment. So you will see exactly the same if you put a graphics card in, then you can enable the package C state, but it only goes up to C3. Uh, if you go with the integrated graphics and no PCI Express lanes uh, connected to the CPU, uh, then it can go up to C8. At least that, uh, during my testing, I found this uh, uh, was making uh, a big difference. I see a question in chat from Toasty Things asking on YouTube: Does it make a difference for speed um, if the SSD is connected uh, to CPU lanes or chipset lanes? If you're using a Gen 3, no. If you're using a Gen 4, yes. Yes, so, especially on, yeah. on Z590 that we're using now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're using the chipset lanes, Z590 only gives you Gen 3 chipset lanes. Exactly, yeah. So this is a Gen 3 SSD. Also, uh, 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 we didn't choose this one uh, um, for this reason, but uh, our swapping components, uh, I've done a lot of testing. I also used a lot of different power supplies and see if there's a lot of difference between power supplies in idle, like a 1200 watts compared to a 650. And yes, it, it makes a little bit of a difference, but not that much or not as much as you would think. Uh, and also some things that were surprising, like this M.2 move from CPU to chipset, uh, it saves some, some, some power. 
Uh, as you can see in the, the bottom graph, it's doing about 3.8 to 4, 4 ish uh, watts at the moment. So uh, before it was 6, okay, it's only 1.5 watts. Uh, but percentage wise, it's still quite a lot. Yeah, and this is a software thing. Uh, not sure where, where we were at with the. Uh, the last, uh, uh, I think it was about 24 something. Yeah, 24 ish yeah. indeed. Now it is around, yeah, it's hovering still. In the long idle, it, I would say it would go down to 19 or something. So when we were starting with uh, uh, the regular motherboard running in idle with the same CPU, the same memory, the same SSD, we were starting a little bit over 40 watts. And now we're already down to this with the 12 VO and yeah. some optimizations. In the long run, it uh, also did longer runs on, on the, uh, in the pre-test. Uh, it, it, it would s still save around four to five watts uh, uh, moving the SSD from the, the CPU to the chipset. So again, four to five watts may be nothing to you if you're running a 400 watts uh, gaming system. And if you're using an office system uh, that's just <coughs> uh, uh, sitting idle for about 99% of the time, uh, waiting for the, uh, the user input, then uh, those watts uh, might come into handy uh, to save. And uh, if you have 100 PCs, uh, it, it will make, uh, make a difference on the electric bill. Um, <coughs> that, that's a, one other thing. Or were you going to do something no, else? No, no, no. I'm just reading some questions. But oh, continue, okay. continue. Sure. The the <coughs> the one thing uh, this system is uh, still capable of doing a little bit more power uh, saving is by uh, unplugging the HDMI cable because at the moment we're running in duplicate mode. So basically, we're running two uh, uh, two displays at the same time. It doesn't matter if you do an extended mode or a duplicate. So one is the display port to your monitor yeah. and the other one <coughs> is the HDMI to my capture card right yeah. here. <laughs> so, so stuff like that also matters uh, for, for power consumption on idle. So even if you have a graphics card, if you have two uh, monitors or three monitors, uh, that will raise the power as well. And uh, with some cards, it's only like five watts. Some cards, it's not that much at all. But I've also seen that it will jump 20 watts uh, depending on, on the GPU and depending on what kind of monitors and what kind of resolution you're going to combine as well. And uh, with, with yeah, new technologies like HDR and 10-bit colors, uh, then the GPU will switch to a higher power mode. And uh, that will, yeah, that will uh, make the, these 4 to 5 watt uh, uh, savings uh, go to waste or yeah, be less relevant at least. But it yeah. What about if we just unplug it and show what it does? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good idea. Let's try that. Now, uh, the wattage now is around 19. Okay. Uh, I pulled the wrong cable. <laughs> We're watching the ceiling, I think. Yeah. The ceiling, oh yeah. <laughs> the droid cam is still active then. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, so now the, the, the monitor is still on. Okay, system still running. And it's dropping uh, to sometimes a little bit higher so it's between 15 and you know, 23 but 15 and 18 so yeah you could still save some power so let's say it's around 16 ish so average. we're basically playing how low can you go yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even these C states do, don't really matter on performance if you, you're going to task your CPU. Uh, so if you're doing gaming or 3D rendering or whatever you want to do, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, <coughs> this is only when the, the CPU is doing nothing or almost nothing. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see it on the droid camera. I hope it can focus. So before it was about four, and now it's yeah it's fluctuating a little bit more, but sometimes it's also going down to three point four. So the average will be very low. So CPU wise, this is as low you you can get, and you can go. Uh, oh. uh, sorry, 
<coughs> um, with Intel, you can go pretty low, uh, and it, it's, it's quite good at power saving in, in idle. Um, uh, you can go lower with Intel than with AMD. So that's a, a bit of a difference there, indeed. So yeah, AMD is actually quite efficient, efficient under load. With, uh, yeah, under load. Yeah. And Intel is very efficient under idle. Yeah. So yeah, that, uh, that that's what we've seen from uh, Intel and in, yeah, also the last decade, I would say. Uh, they were good at power saving, and it also shows in the laptop uh, things. And this is also something you could keep in mind when building a system are you running it like 99 percent in idle mode and one percent under load or is it really a game pc where it's under load maybe yeah. 80 percent of the time because then it can make a difference okay well, when we had the two uh, screens connected um, it was around 18 watts let's pop in a, a graphics card and see what that does for uh, for power saving <coughs> So I'm going to use a, a, a RTX uh, 2070 Super uh, Gaming X. The reason I use that one, it only has, it only requires two uh, power connectors, and the 12 VO uh, prototype power supply only ca came with two graphics card uh, power cables. So. <coughs> So we're still keeping the C state uh, uh, in the bias uh, at the most optimal uh, setting, and we, we still have moved the, 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 the SSD to the chipset. But at this moment, it won't matter that much because if you pop in a graphics card, the PCI Express on your CPU uh, will be active. <coughs> of course, it needs to redetect the graphics card, so uh, we might need to reboot again. Shiro is asking, is there a release date for the X570S? I'm wondering if it's worth the wait. Um, the MAG models that we've shown today, so the uh, MAG X570S Torpedo Max and the uh, MAG X570S Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi, uh, they'll be coming in, um, in the coming month already. The other ones will be a little bit later. So also, if you want more information about those, once we're um, nearing the release date of those models as well, we will definitely have a new live stream. Um, where we show you all the ins and outs. Um, Jose is asking, wouldn't it be better to test um, these temperatures, speeds, etc., through BIOS or Linux? Why Windows as a preference? I think many people use Windows. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> the easy reason. Most yeah. people use Windows, so it's and yeah most interesting for most people to know what it does in Windows. Our target audience is still doing a lot of gaming, so yeah, I think Windows is the platform for gaming at the moment. So, and also, for example, the 12 VO will you will see a lot, for example, in the future with system integrators. Yeah. For example, for office computers, stuff like that, and they will also tend to use Windows usually. Yeah. Also, in bias is not interesting because nobody spends that long in the bias and Overclockers, also the but, bias yeah. <laughs> yeah no the bias is also not uh, uh, programmed for power saving as well so the c states won't kick in on the bias same if you if you would boot dos not sure if it's still possible on uh, on those uh, uh, new biases but uh, if you run like a legacy os then the the, the c states won't kick in I see, very good question from yeah. Toasty Things. Does a higher C state have negative impact on performance? Uh, no, it doesn't, no. no. Because basically, once you start doing yeah. anything that requires a certain action of your computer, it will disable the C state to yeah. enable those features or clocks or whatever. Uh, it, it, in theory, yes, it, it will, uh, will uh, do some delay from, from uh, sleep state to wake state. Um, but with CPUs today, it's, uh, uh, it's not something you will notice. No, no. What, what we saw in the past, and I'm talking about, I think it was Gabby Lake uh, territory, so like 7700K. Uh, at that time. So the uh, 7 gen Intel Core? Yeah, uh, with, uh, uh, with those motherboards, uh, we, we saw when C states were kicking in at that time, I, I think maximum was about C6. Uh, uh, and you would do the USB testing. So we had the first use or one of the first USB 10 gig uh, um, SSD. It was like two SSD in RAID 
in one package from SanDisk. And um, uh, what we saw is that our bias was already targeting uh, power saving. Uh, uh, and with one media in, in the Netherlands, they, um, they tested with uh, uh, the integrated graphics. So the, our C states would kick in while our competitors w wouldn't. And we saw that our, um, uh, our USB speeds were lower. If they put in a graphics card, then the C states would, uh, would not go into the deeper uh, C states. So and basically, the because they were speed. not using a graphics card, it yeah. kicked back to power saving mode, basically. Yeah. And that hurt USB performance. Yeah. So if, but for a gamer, it didn't matter because they will, will use a GPU anyway. So the CPU will not go into the deeper uh, package C states, and, and and the USB speed wouldn't hurt that much. So, uh, yeah. Uh, like our current bias is also when you load the defaults, the package C state won't be enabled, so it would still be active all the time. And probably that's because in the past we hurt, uh, we were hurt by the, the, the USB performance uh, uh, in the reviews. So we also learn from those uh, things and uh, most motherboards are optimized for performance more than for, uh, for power At least most, especially like the gaming models and the ones that you will find in yeah. the consumer market. Yeah. Um, this will be slightly different, for example. Yeah, th this is a pro board, so yeah, yeah uh, people might use this with integrated graphics and might not be a gaming system. So th that's why this is targeted, yeah. I see a question from District 76. Does every motherboard have XMP feature? Um, not everyone, no, like the H310 and stuff, uh, they didn't. Uh, and also, it, it depends a bit on what motherboard you use, yeah. how useful it is. For example, if you're using uh, a B460 motherboard from the previous generation, um, there you can, for example, enable XMP, but you will always be limited to the memory frequency um, that your CPU can provide. So if you're using a, a Core i5 or a yeah. Core i3, it will be 2666. If it's a Core i7, Core i9, it will be 2933 uh, from the 10th generation. Um, so um, even though you, for example, have a 3600 megahertz memory kit, but you got in a 10th generation Core i7, it will still run at 2933 megahertz. It will, however, use your XMP timings on your memory. Um, so those it will use, but not, not always the frequency. That depends very much on, on the chipset as well. Now with B550, that does support memory overclocking. Um, but also, for example, Z590 or B550 on AMD, X570, they all support memory overclocking, so they can um, take the uh, XMP speed from your memory kit anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ken is saying, how cool would it be if those cool MSI chairs had built-in anti-static protection? <laughs> Um, I saw another interesting question. Let me quickly scroll back a little bit. A ah, suggestion from Toasty Things. You could set up a power efficiency guide. Could be very interesting for some customers. Maybe yeah. that's an interesting topic for a future live stream as well. Um, because this is also, a, for example, I'm very much into extremely small um, DIY build system, so <coughs> mini ITX, very small graphics cards, motherboards, but also small CPU coolers. So for me, efficiency is very important in order for my system not to overheat. Uh, so for example, under vaulting, etc. There you can also yeah. get some gains. Yeah. Also um, interesting on uh, notebooks uh, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely an interesting topic. Yeah. We will keep that one in mind. Um, BS Odyssey Rages is saying, does SteamOS run well on the board? I don't think we've tested SteamOS on this specific motherboard. Uh, I haven't I tested SteamOS uh, in the last six years, no. It's, it's Linux based, right? Yeah. So I would say if Linux runs well, then SteamOS should run well as well, in I theory. Don't know how actively it's uh, being uh, developed at the moment. So. Yeah. So anyway. anything more on the ATX 12VO? Yeah, it, w w I'm up and running with the RTX 2070 now. Uh, it's already running for a couple of minutes. Um, <coughs> as you can see, the uh, the bottom graph it will show that the the CPU package isn't 
raised that much uh, before it was around six uh, watts or something. Um, so the big difference here, we were running it without a graphics card, now we're running yeah. it with the graphics card. Uh, also, you can see that the, the, the package C state, the maximum uh, possible when the PCI Express is active, is C3. So the same happens with the uh, SSD connected to the, uh, to the CPU. Uh, that will limit it to C3. If and we were on card, C... C8 on C8, the package. So yeah. that's a quite a big step. Uh, yeah, so there's more power savings to be had with C8 and with C3. Um, even if you do the bias defaults, then you would be at C0, so meaning no power saving on a package. And package means everything in the CPU except the cores. So it's the sometimes called uncore or SOC or whatever. Uh, so any parts that it can disable or can power down, it will try to power down. With C3, you can power down less than with C8. Uh, so the CPU package uh, in, in, in HW Info is uh, yeah, it's around seven watts, so it's not that much higher than the, 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 the five or, or six watts we saw before. Uh, but if we look at the wall meter, let's see uh, what the differences are there. Because we were at 18 watts with the C states enabled, and now we're at 38, 39, 40. So a big jump up again. Yeah, I would say it, it's like 39 on average. So basically so we're almost back at what we came from. Uh, exactly, yeah. So um, even if I, I would enable the defaults, then it, it will do less saving on a CPU and it will jump, I think, around 48 I did in the pre-testing. So it will add another 8 or 9 watts. So th that's, yeah. <coughs> That's what a graphics card will do in idle. So <laughs> if I fire it up and, and put load on the, on the GPU, then of course it's a, it's a whole other ballpark, of course. But e even in idle, if you were just browsing the internet, um, that will yeah, add, I would say, uh, around 20 watts. So basically, if you want to have an extremely efficient system, that doesn't need a lot of, for example, you only use it to browse the internet or whatever, Yeah. then don't use a dedicated graphics card, yeah. basically. Uh, I don't know what, what an AMD APU does, but I would say that the Intel uh, integrated uh, is probably the, the best you can get for, for power saving on a, on a full-size desktop. And that, that's not specifically only because of the power draw of the CPU, but also because you will basically disable a couple of C states when using a graphics yeah. card. Yeah, and, and th those technologies were borrowed from their, uh, uh, yeah, the, the laptop uh, CPU. So they've also in integrated this in the, in the desktop CPUs. Um, let's do another giveaway. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider, or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, um, please follow the link um, that the bot puts in the chat um, so you can directly go to Gleam. They can perform several actions. The more you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. And today we will be giving away several Assassin's Creed Valhalla game codes. And I've got our next winner for today. Ooh, that's a difficult name. Can you pronounce this, Ruud? Liubomir. <laughs> <laughs> Liubomir? We're very sorry for our pronunciation, but congratulations, you did win a uh, game code for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, please keep an eye out on your mailbox, so we will send it to you in the coming days. And okay. uh, we hope you enjoy it. If you haven't participated yet, make sure to do so, because later in the stream, you will definitely have another chance to win. So Ruud, do yes. you want to show more 12 volt stuff? or? Uh, not necessarily 12 volt stuff, but um, any cool tips and tricks? It, the, there was uh, some VRAM testing done on B560 by Hardware Unboxed, and um, uh, they always do great VRAM testing. Uh, I think they are the best at doing that in, in, the, in the industry, at least in you know, what I read and what, what I see in, in the languages I understand. And um, well, what we saw there was that um, they, they had. Yeah, they were talking about what our uh, defaults uh, were, but actually we don't really have specific defaults. Um, uh, normally if you change the CPU, 
uh, on our motherboards. And uh, our bias is by no means perfect. Uh, but uh, <coughs> I, I can force uh, uh, the bias uh, to, to show that uh, page again. Well, ho hopefully it will also work on the 12 volt one. I haven't tried it yet. Otherwise I need to get the B560 on and I have to screw every component. Yeah, we have from to this one dismantle to that the whole yeah. <laughs> test bench. Okay, well, let's go into the bias. Hopefully the monitor will also do it. Actually, I don't have to press uh, the delete button because I cleared the CMOS as well. I want to show one uh, bias page. And hopefully it will show. <coughs> yeah, this, this is the, the cooler selection. Uh, so here we have the water cooler. And basically that sets it up to do unlimited power on the CPU. So oh. basically your CPU can draw as much power as it needs in order to get maximum performance. Yeah. And of course this depends on the power circuit on the motherboard because if you have like a very entry level B560 board, for example like this one, uh, this one doesn't have uh, any heat sinks on the, uh, the power circuit. So don't expect the world uh, uh, f for this one if you put a 11900K on it. Yeah, so I this don't is think a people very buy this board when they, they're choosing an 11900K. Yeah, because like in theory it can support that CPU, but this is yeah. a very entry level motherboard. So this is really designed yeah. for lower end, for example, Pentiums, Core i3, maybe Core i5. Should also yeah. be okay if you have like a non K model. So uh, for 65 watt boards, this is this is fine. Um, uh, 65 watt CPU, sorry. Um, <coughs> if we go back to the bias, um, of course I'm using the 11900K, uh, which is a, a 125 watt uh, CPU, and our cooler selection is a box cooler. While the 11900K doesn't really have, there is no box cooler for that CPU. Uh, but what it means is that it will use the Intel recommended spec. So it will use the 125 watt long duration power limit or long duration turbo limit. And it will use the uh, power limit uh, number two, which is the short duration turbo power limit. And that, that goes up to 250 watts. So about 56 seconds, it can do 250 watts. After that, it will drop down to 125 watts if it's fully loaded. And also the current limit is uh, rated at, I cannot read 245 amps. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't sure about that one, but that's <laughs> the official spec, yes. So, uh, uh, so this is just official Intel specification. Yeah, this is the, if you want to go with the Intel recommended spec, then go with the box cooler setup for us. Uh, I've seen with the B560 biases, this page will disappear in 10 seconds. So if you haven't, uh, uh, so normally, uh, uh, with the editors, it might it might be possible that they just uh, turn on the PC uh, and uh, <coughs> go into the BIOS and turn uh, may maybe turn on multiple uh, systems at the same time. And when they come back to the B560 board, then it automatically selected the water cooler setup. And for this board, this has a pretty good uh, power circuit uh, for 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 a, uh, so basically it will Z5 just night. unlock the, yeah. the cpu but uh what we've seen with the the, the entry level or the the, the mid-range b560 it will also select water cooler and it will have not the most optimum uh power limits selected so it might uh, might have caused uh, uh, uh the limitations on, on on the board of course <coughs> if you select any of them, you can still change it later. So if you go to the uh, OC BIOS again, then uh, uh, you can change it under advanced CPU configuration. And uh, here it will show you uh, what power limits you want to set. So the long duration power limit, uh, that's uh, PL1. And uh, the short duration power limit is uh, power limit 2. So instead of choosing one of the presets that we saw before, you can also manually yeah, you can put manually in there which one. Yeah, the, the, the gray part is what it's set now. So I've chosen the water cooler one. Uh, so it's 4069 or something. 
it's hard to read from this, this distance. <laughs> uh, and uh, so basically maxing out completely, so there's no limit. Uh, Toasty Things is saying regarding the uh, B560 testing and testing it showed that boards with better VRM had less power draw. So lower end boards took more power of the wall. Does that mean a better yeah. VRM has a higher efficiency? Yes. Yes, that's it exactly definitely what does. it is. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you see more phases or uh, better components like uh, uh, Dr. Moss or um, even uh, smart power stages, then then the efficiency will, will go up and, and the, the power draw usually goes down. This uh, is also something, yeah. you don't only see this on motherboards, you also see this for example with power supplies. Usually if you have um, a better power supply, like a higher quality power supply, it will also be more efficient. You have higher quality components that don't lose as much power, so also they stay cooler because they don't um, lose the power because that turns into heat basically. Um, so definitely a better VRM means a higher efficiency and usually also lower temperatures. Um, Ralph Trinidad is saying, is it safe to turn on XMP? Yep. Yes. Normally it should be a problem and sometimes you need to tweak it if it's not 100% stable. It's still possible because, yeah, uh, also depending on, on, uh, on the different um, memory modules and we, we test a lot of memory modules in, the, in our headquarters but there's still uh, too many to test so it's always possible that it's not fine-tuned for your particular uh, part number. Um, I see it says asking what's the minimum PSU requirement for MSI Gaming X3030 80 with a Ryzen 9 3900X. I think the official minimum would be like 750 watts if you have very high quality, for example, 650 watts, it all depends on the quality of the, yeah. the power supply as well. You can have a relatively weak 850 watt and a very strong 650 watt. Yeah. Um, so I would say if you want to be safe, go for a decent 750 watt. Yeah. Um, but also I, I on a very strong yeah. 650, you should be fine. Uh, I, I think 750 will fit most. Uh, yeah. Most builds, if you don't do overclocking. Yeah, and that, that's a very important factor. Do you want to run it in stock? Then you're probably good to go with yeah. um, a less powerful power supply. If you want to do overclocking, that will increase <coughs> your power draw quite a lot. And um, AMD CPU will top out around 150 watts, so uh, it, it's not like the Intel. The Intel goes uh, 100 watts higher, so if you go Intel, you might need to also have a beefier power yeah. supply. And also, if you're, for example, overclocking on your uh, yeah. GPU, it will really exponentially increase the power draw of your CPU yeah. or, uh, or of your uh, system. Also, um, you, with the Intel, this one, the 11900K, you even have the uh, advanced boost technology. Uh, where is it? Intel Adaptive Boost Technology. Yeah. So short <coughs> ABT. Yeah, so if you enable that one, it will go up to 300 watts instead of 250. No, actually, this one does 220-ish uh, without any power viruses like OCCT or Prime95. Um, Mardon Rem is asking, is this the most recent BIOS update? I haven't seen this. I think you're talking about the presets, right? Um, I think that's already in our BIOS. We also had that, for example, in our 400 series, so B460. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the motherboard if you have that setting, of course. Yeah, for the, for the Intel, you do have the, the advanced CPU configuration with the power limits and stuff. Uh, you don't see this on uh, the AMD because AMD has different uh, names and also different uh, mechanisms to, to yeah. control the power. And basically, it works in a different way than with yeah. Intel. They have uh, other parameters to set in the BIOS. Also under uh, AMD CPU overclocking, uh, so kind of similar, but just different names and different uh, settings you need to adjust. Um, also, the power savings, um, we don't see um, many power saving, like the C-state stuff, we don't see in the, in the AMD biases at all. So, um, and th they do have the, the C-state, it's enabled by default, uh, I saw it on the uh, an X570S Tomahawk bias. Uh, and also HW Info reported it. Uh, and go, it went up to uh, package C6, but uh, since it's completely different architecture, also the power savings will be a lot different. 
and usually AMD is more power consuming and idle. With or without, yeah, you cannot run it without a GPU if you have the regular Ryzen 9. Yeah, uh, the great gamer 505 asks, is it possible to overclock an RDX 3060? Yes, it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Short answer, right? <laughs> yeah. Use afterburner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I quickly want to show you a slide because I made a quick overview of uh, our B560 yeah. motherboards with their uh, power limits. Um, so basically, you have two power limits. Those are the one you can also the ones you can also see in uh, the BIOS here. You have the long duration power limit. Um, and you have the short duration power limit. And the long duration power limit is usually a little bit lower because um, it needs to be able to run for a longer period of time. Um, so that one is uh, PL1 in this uh, example. So you see, for example, on the, the MAG B560 and Bazooka, or the Pro VDH, or the other Pro Series models, um, they are a little bit more limited on the uh, long duration power limit, but on the short duration, PL2, they can go a little bit higher. Um, then we have our higher end B560 models. So for example, the Mortar, the Mortar Wi-Fi, Torpedo, Tomahawk, uh, but also the Mini ITX Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. They have a really strong VRM design, so they are able to have those um, uh, power limits they can um, have for a sustained period of time. So also your long duration power limit, you can go all the way up to 255 watts, um, and it can run that for an extended period of time without um, you having to be worried about the VRM on your motherboard. They all have dedicated cooling on the VRM as well. Um, and then you have ICC Max. Um, there is a slight difference here compared to, for example, B460, uh, the previous generation. There, I think, for the top-end boards, IC Max was at 210, right, Ruud? Which one? On uh, B460 boards, the higher-end models. I think they went up to 210 IC yeah, Max. Yeah, yeah. 210 amps. And um, maybe that's also because it was the recommended for the uh, 10900K. Yeah. And because 245 is, is introduced with the 11900K. Yeah, being so, the so the new Rocket Lake spec, CPUs. Yeah. Um, and on our uh, Tomahawk, Torpedo and Mortar models, you can go up to 245 now. Um, the Mini ITX Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, uh, the Bazooka and the Pro VDH can go 210. And other Pro Series motherboards go yeah. up to 180. With, with the 245 amp uh, ICC Max, it will also cap um, the ad adaptive boost technology. Uh, if you would, would set that to unlimited, like 256 or highest possible, then it will go uh, probably uh, towards the 300 watt package power, so the CPU will consume that much. If you do 245, it will drop down it's still a lot, but uh, it will still consume a lot. This is about 260, 270. So yeah, it, it will make a difference if it's coolable or not coolable with normal water cooling. So 300 watts is very difficult to cool with a, um, with a, uh, a just a regular water cooling kit. Then you yeah, need so like even if you have a very high end, for example, Z590 motherboard, yeah. like a Godlike or an Ace or a Unify, yeah. they have no problem at all running 300 watts on the CPU. The VRM can easily handle that. Even but this you will, one can. Yeah, but you will have much trouble cooling that CPU, yeah, the CPU even with the 360 the yeah. millimeter radiator, etc. Yeah. Even in an in a open test bench situation like this, 300 watts is a lot to cool. We used uh, uh, our MPG uh, K360 water cooling at full speed. and then That's a very high-end yeah. water cooling from Acetec. Yeah, <laughs> and it still, yeah, it, it still went to 95C, yeah. The, so yeah. So yeah, it, yeah. then the CPU calling, uh, cooling becomes an issue, but not the power delivery on your motherboard. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, or with the limitation with the ICC Max, it will just drop it a little bit and yeah. then it will become coolable with a 360 uh, all on one uh, water cooling. So you still do need a very high end yeah, still, cooler yeah. to be able yeah. to cool this? With 11900K, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with the Core i5, if you, for example, have an 11400, this will be way different. Yeah, uh, the, the advanced boost technology is only available. Yeah, that, on that one's only anyway, in the, yeah. So, yeah. But Even also the, in yeah. terms of the without ABT, it will still be very different whether you're using yeah. a Core i9 or a Core i5 in yeah. terms of what the power consumption of the CPU will do. Yeah, exactly. Um, Toasty Things is asking, so these power limits are fixed. 
No, you can actually define them yourself. Yeah. But this These is basically the maximum that the motherboard can support. Yeah. If you boot up the system and uh, you will get the page with the water cooling and after 10 seconds you didn't make a choice, it will choose this, uh, this as the recommended uh, power limit. Uh, you still need to check if your cooling is uh, capable of doing this because water cooling is uh, selection in the bias means it's already at a higher uh, 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 power limit. So um, if you want to drop it even further, then you need to uh, fine tune it for your cooling. And also that you can also remove the limits, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but it, not recommended because those limits are there also to protect the power circuit on the board. This is basically what what we consider is safe for a specific motherboard. Yeah. So this is what you what you can run with the power delivery on that motherboard. Yeah. If you go beyond, then it's not but guaranteed that the, power, the like the the VRM design is not made to go higher than the numbers that you see here. Of course, you can go lower if you want to build a very small system. Um, you might have cooling issues there uh, if you go, for example, beyond um, 80 watts. So then you can set those power limits um, lower if you desire. Um, so you can set them higher. We, I wouldn't recommend to do that, um, to go beyond them, uh, especially on, for example, the, um, uh, the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi ITX Tomahawk Torpedo Mortar. You can already go so high that yeah. um, you, you probably don't want to go beyond this because then CPU cooling be also will become a huge issue. Yeah, and, and th these settings are uh, um, the default for the 125 watt uh, CPU part. So the 1100, so the K series, 1600K yeah. and 11700K, the 11900K or KF. They will they will set this uh, kind of defaults. I have no idea because I, ha I haven't tested it uh, with, with a Rocket Lake chip from 65 watts. Um, what it will do in that default, but looking at the hardware unboxed review and the VRM testing, they show that it will limit it to 65 as default, which is a kind of a weird thing. That's not something I would expect, but we have to look into that, into it. Uh, this table also, uh, we, we want to show in the open that uh, um, hardware unboxed made a very fair point that the user doesn't really know what to expect from the B560 boards because the performance and the power draw was all over the place when they did the VRM testing. So they had to set up every motherboard with unlimited power limits. And hopefully they also did unlimited ICC max. <coughs> so, but th that it's also kind of dangerous because it will uh, remove the safety guards for the VRM. So uh, you have to check the VRM from not overheating. Of course, their test was uh, uh, VRM testing, so <laughs> yeah, you can blow it up. And Why? it also depends yeah. on the CPU cooler that you're using, because for example, yeah. can you grab the B560 Pro motherboard you have right there? Yeah, I have many. Yeah, I have all of them here. Yeah, so here you, for all example, all. you see that yeah. you don't have any additional cooling no. on your VRM. So if you're using a, a top no. flow CPU cooler or tower cooler, your, your VRM will still get a little bit of airflow. Yeah. Um, but if you're using an all-in-one liquid cooler, yeah. then you don't get any airflow from your CPU cooler on your VRM. So that can also make a very big difference in the temperatures yeah. of your VRM. And while this isn't, wasn't the worst in, in, their, in their testing at all, uh, uh, you cannot expect this to perform well with an 11900K. Uh, so this is not designed to... power limits, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you want to do that, then at least go with, with the upgraded one with, with at least the, the heat sinks on, you know? Uh, also, the power circuit would be a little bit, uh, would have two phases more, uh, but especially the heat sinks will make uh, the, the biggest difference. But uh, if you I, I would still not go with this one. No, if, if I you really want to, like, yeah, if way. you want to <laughs> run a higher end rocket leg like an i7 yeah. or an i9, <coughs> you can of course do that on a on a B560. Yeah. But then indeed go for an even stronger motherboard. And th this one is. is uh, uh, an upgrade over the the pro uh, VDH Wi-Fi, and this is uh, uh, which one is it? This bazooka. Bazooka. Oh yeah, right. Uh, all right, I have the mortar. Yeah, the mortar is the one that that's the first board without the power limits or almost no power limits, only the ICC Max at 245 uh, amps. That that will be this one. Now above this one would be of course the the Tomahawk. Uh, which is basically the same power circuit as this yeah, one. Yeah, Tomahawk, uh, torpedo, torpedo, and yeah. mortar, they basically share the yeah. same power design. Yeah, only the mortar is a micro ADX and the other ones are full ADX. But the power circuit is very similar and also the cooling on the VRM is very similar. 
and you can see that's a big chunk of uh, metal and also has quite a lot of ribs so there's a lot of surface area to cool if you have any airflow so if you want to do 11900k at least go for like a mortar or better i would say if you if you want to choose a, a b560 or even better go with the z590 boards uh, also uh, tested by a hardware box and um, we showed very good performance there so Ruud, talking yes. about this nice mag b560m mortar wi-fi that you're holding right there yeah we actually gave one of these models to our in-house overclocker top pc in our headquarters okay and he did some memory overclocking with this because the cool thing about b560 when comparing it to b460 is that you can now do memory overclocking on the b series on intel as well mm -hmm. and this is what our overclocker got from a b560m mortar wi-fi motherboard okay so that's ddr4 6400 megahertz <laughs> so even on a b series motherboard nowadays you really can get insane memory speeds and you, we just talked about the the pro model that you have right there with uh, w that doesn't have any vrm cooling but it does have two memory slots and we also gave that one to top pc and that one can go even further up to ddr4 6666 <laughs> so that's let, okay it's that small this one. right here yeah. yeah and the reason why this can go even higher is because it has two dim slots so you yeah. will get an even clearer signal to your memory yeah. slots um, and that will mean that you, your memory frequencies that you can achieve with boards like this uh, is really insane so ddr4 <laughs> 6666 megahertz um, so that, yeah uh, memory overclocking on B560, I think it's a, it's a really nice addition over the previous generation. And it can really make quite a big performance difference in certain situations. Certain games also really benefit from, from higher frequencies. Um, and of course, even with an i9 processor in the 10th generation, um, on a B460 motherboard, you will still lock to 2933 megahertz. Um, but now with these motherboards, you can go so much higher than that. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool to see what even uh, yeah. Yeah, a very cheap B560 motherboard can do with memory frequencies. Something else I'd like to show a little bit. We, we touched on this in a previous live stream, but for people who missed that, I want to give you a quick explanation of how PCI Express works on um, uh, when using a 10th generation or an 11th generation CPU on a B560 motherboard because there are a couple of quite significant differences there. Um, so of course the 10th generation Intel Core uh, Comet Lake S uh, CPUs, they are still on PCI Express Gen 4. That's of course the first big difference with the new 11th generation Rocket Lake CPUs. They support PCI Express Gen 4, but that's not where it stops because um, 10th generation only offers 16 lanes of PCI Express Gen 3. So that's basically the 16 lanes for your uh, graphics card, and that's where it stops. But with 11th generation um, uh, Intel Core, so the Rocket Lake CPUs, they support 20 lanes from the CPU. So 16 go to your graphics card, so your main PCI Express uh, time 16 slot, but it has four additional dedicated lanes for your primary um, M.2 slot. So if we take a look at um, the combination of B560, with an 11th gen Intel Core processor, then you see that the primary um, uh, M.2 slot will run at PCI Express Gen 4. The lanes are coming from the CPU. If you have a second or a third slot, those lanes will come out of your chipset. So they will still run at PCI Express Gen 3. Um, so here you see that it's, it's um, of course, if you run this combination, if you have a Gen 4 SSD, make sure always to use the top slot because, because that's the one that will take the lanes from the CPU. But then something interesting happens if you're going to combine a B560 motherboard with a 10th generation Intel Core processor, because that processor doesn't give you the additional four lanes from the CPU. Um, but we actually made, uh, on several motherboards, we made the primary M.2 slot switchable, and that means that that slot can also use the uh, lanes from your chipset. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and this means that even though you don't have the 11th generation with the additional four lanes, you can still use that primary M.2 slot. Um, and this is something you will find on, on all gaming models, for example, but also the Pro VDH. 
um, you can still use that primary uh, M.2 slot there. That's not the case with all B560 motherboards on the market because many are not switchable and that will, if you run a 10th gen Intel Core processor on those motherboards, they will just disable the first slot because they don't get the four lanes from the CPU. So you, if they're not switchable, you cannot get any lanes from the chipset to that primary M.2 slot. Um, you might be wondering why this is disabled on our Tomahawk and Torpedo. Um, that's because they already have a third M.2 slot. So you will still get those two M.2 slots. And you, of course, still have the lane limitation of the B560 chipset. Um, so that means that on those motherboards, there the primary slot will disable. So if you're running a 10th generation Intel Core processor on a B560 uh, Tomahawk Wi-Fi or a B560 Torpedo, make sure to put the SSD in the second or the third slot and not the primary slot. You might be familiar with this board. This is our MEG Z590 Ace. And that one was launched earlier this year. Um, I think it's a very good looking motherboard. Um, but we get a lot, a lot of questions that people who want to do, for example, uh, a white or silver themed kind of uh, build. Um, and we got so many of these requests that we have a very cool special edition of this motherboard. It's called, uh, called the MEG Z590 Ace Gold Edition. And Ruth, you have one right there, don't you? I, I should have. I haven't opened it, so for me it's just as new as for the rest of the people. Okay. So you can already see the back plate. That one is also silver. This is the back plate. It's silver. Even the box is shiny, you know. The inside of the box also nice and stuff. Looks kind of interesting. <coughs> and this is the front. So this is our new so MEG Z590 Ace Gold Edition. Very shiny. And the gold on there is actually a real 24 karat uh, gold foil on there. This one? Yeah, so it's not massive gold, but there's like actual gold foil on there. Hmm. I have a screwdriver, I can peel it off. Don't destroy Take it, it okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if people, do you like the looks? I think it's either love it or hate it for most people. It's uh, definitely something different, so um, yeah, I, I think people will like it because uh, you won't see it every day. Yeah, it is indeed very unique, um, and it's also a very, very powerful motherboard. So this one, for example, has 16 um, Intercell 90 amp power stages for the CPU. So previously we were talking about those power limits. You don't yeah. have to worry about any of the power limits on a motherboard like this. You will always first run into CPU temperature issues yeah. before you hit the maximum of what this uh, VRM can provide. Um, it has an eight layer PCB um, with two, oun two ounce thickened copper. Um, so also very efficient in dissipating heat with the additional copper in the PCB. Um, and the eight layers will also give you a very clear signal, for example, um, to your memory slots. Um, so this one can go up uh, over 5,600 megahertz with overclocking, of course, you can go even a little bit further. Um, it also, on the uh, rear I.O., it offers two times Thunderbolt 4. So maybe you can turn it. So you can see two Type-C ports uh, on the I.O. And there are two DisplayPort inputs um, next to it. And that means that you can connect the DisplayPort from your graphics card um, to the I.O. of your motherboard, and then you will also get the display signal over the Thunderbolt 4 ports. It also has four M.2 slots, and all of them have M.2 Shield Frozer cooling. If you want to run a Gen 4 SSD, make sure to put it in the top slot, because the other ones are connected to the chipset, and on Z590 the chipset will provide PCI Express Gen 3. So if you want to use a Gen 4 SSD, make sure to use the top slot. Um, this board also comes with Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN as well as Intel Wi-Fi 6E connectivity. So before we go to our next topic, because I have topics? one more thing to show today, and mm -hmm. it's a very cool sneak peek, but I'm first going to draw another winner in our giveaway. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Um, you can also follow the direct link uh, in YouTube or Twitch chat 
Um, that will bring you to Gleam. There you can perform s several actions. The more you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. And our next winner for a game code of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is Olco. Congratulations, you also won a game code. Uh, keep an eye out on your mailbox so we will email you uh, the code in the coming days. Um, then I have one more thing to show and then I will do one more drawing um, for our giveaway. So if you haven't signed up yet, last chance to do so. And then I have a sneak peek of an upcoming product. Uh, and that's our MAG Core Liquid C series. Um, so these, this is an upcoming uh, liquid cooler, of course, core, in our Core Liquid series. Um, this will come in two sizes. Uh, so the C240 will have a 240 millimeter radiator and the C360 will have a 360 millimeter radiator. So the C240, of course, comes with two fans. The C360 uh, comes with three fans. And um, these coolers will have out-of-the-box support for Intel LGA 1700. Um, so also, these are really future-proof. Um, if you want uh, to build an Intel rig in the future, these um, liquid coolers are already prepared for those systems out of the box. So you will get all uh, the, the necessary equipment included in the box. Um, I don't have any exact price information for you yet, but what I can promise is that these coolers will give you a great price performance ratio. Um, so you might know our MAG series, uh, MPG series and MEG series. Um, we already have several coolers in our MPG series, liquid coolers. Um, and with MAG, we're really trying to, to offer a lot of bang for the buck. And that's what we're really targeting with these liquid coolers. But they do still support a very nice Mystic Light addressable RGB lighting. Um, so for all your RGB needs, uh, we will try to satisfy that as well. Of course, once these coolers, this is still a sneak peek. I'm not going to give you any more details than this. But once these coolers go out, we will definitely make sure um, to get a couple of samples to show them in the live stream, to show the performance, uh, maybe do a nice system build with it. Um, I hope you like the design. Uh, I think the water block especially looks really cool. It's really different from what, what, what you're probably used to uh, in terms of uh, all-in-one liquid cooler water block design. Um, so yeah, you're, you're the first ones to see this. Now let's do our final winner before we end for today. And next week, um, we will talk about some new gaming desktops. Ja will, of course, be here for that topic because he knows all the ins and outs of these new topics or, or of these new gaming desktops. And we'll talk about the 11th generation Infinite X and Trident 3 desktops. Um, so Ja will show you all the ins and outs of these systems. We'll show some performance, of course. Um, so definitely make sure to be here again uh, next week. Same place, same time. And then we have our last Winner for today, uh, Grillen365. Congratulations, you also won a game code for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So, Ruud, any final words for today? Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show, and that's it. <laughs> Stay safe, and yep. hope to see you again next week. Goodbye. Okay, bye bye.